cuisine is very diverse. A variety of ingredients are cooked in different ways to reappear in dozens of delicious dishes. And anchoring all those creations are Korea's fermented foods, the root and foundation of Korean cuisine. This episode celebrates the feast created by Korea's iconic fermented foods, soy sauce, doenjang, cheonggukjang, gochujang, and kimchi. What are the secrets of Korean fermented food? This is where I work. I teach culinary arts with a special emphasis on fusion food, combining Korean and Western cuisines. I went on a trip to find out more about Korea's most well-known food, kimchi. There I saw how fresh Napa cabbages are turned into fermented food. Italian chef Paola de Maria met up with a soy sauce master. And James Howe saw firsthand the long aging process of Twinjang. It was an amazing procedure. Tim Alpha went to see a master of Cheonggukjang, another soy based fermented food. Through these trips, we were able to understand Korean people's unique sentiments and the diverse applications of chang. Now we're about to attend a dinner, marking the end of our journey. I'm Connie Didi, and with me are James Howe, Paula de Maria, Tim Alper. At last, we're all here together. In no time, we're all busy sharing the stories of our trip. Our experiences and feelings can be summarized into several keywords that express the secrets of Korean fermentation. How was your trip? I mean, where, where did you end up going? Um, up north, yeah. kimchi country. <laughs> it was in Gyeonggi-do, uh, not so far away from Seoul, so uh, it, was, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. How about you, Paolo? Where did, where did you go? Uh... Uh, I was in Damyang, so deep south. Deep south. Yeah, and... We travelled all over the country to learn about the flavourful wisdom of Korean fermented foods. What have we learnt? Korea's signature fermented food Twenjang goes well with aged meat. Old kimchi and pickled vegetables are also fermented. The food on the table starts our discussion on fermentation. I'm curious uh, about fermented, you know, both of us, we had this kind of experience about fermented food, in, you know, Korean fermented food. Uh, which was your first uh, uh, impact with the fermented food? Well, we don't have fermented foods that much at home, so it's not something that I would go out and eat either. But since I've been here, I was amazed that the long time of the fermentation, my first thought was, it's got to go bad. Eating something two, three years old, sitting outside in a jar, that cannot be good. And it turns out it's, it's like a fine wine in a way. It ages and then seeing it, the taste, that was the, the most shocking thing mm -hmm. to me. The key to fermentation is aging. 
we visited an underground warehouse to see that process. Great tasting fermented food is achieved only when natural ingredients are processed by ancient yet scientific methods and given time to age at the right temperature. The flavors and textures of kimchi vary widely depending on the level of maturation. Then how is kimchi made? Kimchi is made by stuffing salted cabbage with all sorts of seasonings, salted shrimps and fish sauce. Once a year in late fall, Koreans make big batches of kimchi to last them throughout the winter, an event called kimjang. Now time takes over. As time passes, something mysterious takes place inside Changdog, a large clay jar considered Korea's natural refrigerator. Uh, and if you don't have a refrigerator, how are you going to preserve your food? One of the solutions is to ferment it. And if you're making something a year, a year beforehand, thinking about next year, uh, you know, this is a great way to deal with the food that you have. Probably kimchi was the one of the Korean food that I I loved uh, 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 straight away. Oh. Yeah. So yeah. when I go down to Jorado, yeah. if I go down, I go down like once a year or something like that, I will just buy buckets and buckets of kimchi and bring it back up. <laughs> well, yeah. I kind of actually like uh, the sour kimchi myself, you know, the aged kimchi. Well, it's got more depth to it. I don't know what you think about that, but I think it's got more depth. It's got more history behind it, you know. The, I, I love the sour tanginess of it. Mm -hmm. it it's like making um, kimchi jjigae. You can't make it with fresh kimchi. You have to make it with the most sour kimchi you can find in the refrigerator. Right. The most oldest one back in the corner. That's the one that tastes the best. The flavors of freshly made kimchi and aged kimchi differ greatly. The three-year-old kimchi is refreshingly tangy. It's used mostly in jjigae, the Korean stew. The hot and spicy soup flavoured with tangy kimchi is perfect for perking up one's appetite. Aged kimchi is called mugunji. It effectively counterbalances the heaviness of meat. What about tuenjang, another indispensable part of Korean cuisine? The, uh, actually, the tenjang, uh, that kind of surprised me because um, it has little tiny microscopic holes that's not actually visible to the human eye. Wow. And what that does lets out the carbon dioxide and actually lets in fresh air. So it's almost like breathing like we are. Mm -hmm. So that, I, that's, that's what amazed me. Like kimchi, tenjang also goes through the aging process in Changdok. We found this Changdok very intriguing. <laughs> Clay, the main material of Changdok, is composed of irregularly shaped particles which create minute air pockets during firing. Changdok is dubbed the breathing container because impurities are emitted through these air pockets. It's used to make tenjang too. The bean, smashing the beans to making the meju, hanging the meju, which takes a few months. And the process of just sticking the meju with the salt water and you wait up to one year. Yeah, it's a very long process. Salt and water are added when meju is fermented. Over time, meju turns into tuenjang. The tenjang will actually float to the top and the soybeans will sink to the bottom. And you separate it, one will be tenjang, and then you will actually age, if I'm, not, if I'm, if I'm speaking correct. Yeah. You will strain the, uh, the liquid which is left over, which becomes the uh, soy sauce. From the tenjang, after one year fermentation, you make tenjang. And with the, with the sea salt, that one becomes kanjang. Yeah, the salt water. And the salt water. In a way, Soy sauce is what is left over from making tuenjang. Ferment again for at least one year, and two years, three, and either five years. That's what and you make is. different kind of kanjang. Mm. 
This is gochujang, flavorful and appetizingly red. Spicy, sweet, salty and earthy, gochujang is Korea's quintessential hot sauce. Life in modern times passes rapidly. We are busy just living day after day, going faster and faster. Exhausted by the mindless daily routine, we long for slow food, our reward for waiting. Fermented food is the most well-known Korean slow food, and it is found in every Korean meal. When combined with fermented foods, natural ingredients get a flavor makeover. Anything with like the, the taste that you get from Korean fermented exactly. foods, we don't have anything that I could compare it to. It was very different for me in the U.S. I can't think of any fermented foods that we use as or eat as a as a mainstay as American food. I think sauerkraut maybe was the only thing I could think of. As a, but that you know, doesn't and, even come. And right. I don't know anyone who made it at home mm. either. You know. To, you know, along those kind of uh, lines, some of them definitely a little aged, and the taste is always, it's always, I feel worth it, you know? Leave it in the fridge, that's what I'm thinking. Leave it in the fridge, it'll just get better. Kimchi gains depth as it ages. But the chef says he's going to make a slightly different dish with kimchi. He places kimchi on top of some cooked noodles. Then he garnishes it with a hard-boiled egg, sliced pear, and julienne cucumber. The broth used for this noodle dish is the liquid from the aged kimchi, slightly frozen like slush. How was the tangy flavor of aged kimchi transformed? I like there's a different combination here. You've got the kimchi tastes a little sweet, then you have a little bit of the heat, but you also have the cold of the ice. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah, it's a really nice balance of like three different flavors. If you have to think about harmony between uh, the fermented food uh, like uh, chenjan, uh, kanjan, uh, kimchi, which is the best combination for you to give you the, the, the harmony? I find it really, if you get a really simple thing, um, samjang, right? Yes. So you, you mix some denjang together and then just some raw vegetables and you dip it in there and that's just, it's a very simple thing to eat. Yeah, and it's a crudite and it, it really is like, it's something that never fails. And I'm, I'm yet to find anyone who doesn't like that. That's what I like about going to different barbecue places. Every time, all the side dishes. And I don't think I've ever been to one that they always serve something new in there. They have the kimchi, but they might be three or four different types. And every time I go to a new restaurant or a new area, there's something new on the table to try, which I love. In a Korean meal, all the dishes are served at once, and assorted side dishes called panchan accompany all meals. It's the same when eating meat. Meat is marinated in soy sauce or gochujang and enjoyed wrapped in a lettuce leaf with samjang, which is a mixture of tuenjang, gochujang, sesame seed oil, and other ingredients. 
all these diverse flavors merge together to create a totally different taste. People can eat it any way they like. This is another appeal of Korea's fermented foods. I think, I think, I think Korean food is just like harmony, it's like music, you know? I mean, everything just goes very well together. It goes well with like meats and fish and, and, and poultry. It's very versatile when you think about that. Mm, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Mm. You know, you can assemble all of the notes in a different way and it will produce a different result. It'll sound different, it'll taste different. I mean, you can eat it by yourself, you know, if you want, but uh, normally you combine with, with some other ingredient that gives, uh, the, gives a complete taste. A festival is in full swing in Suncheong, the undisputed home of Kochujang. There was an interesting event underway, the mixing of 2012 servings of bibimbap. The key to bibimbap is finding the balance between vegetables and gochujang. Gochujang is often labeled as the spicy flavor of Koreans, but it's a flavor that's attractive enough to capture the palates of people all over the world. So normally like you have hot sauce and it's just a little bit on there just to give it some flavor, but the, the fermented soybeans were really the whole meal. It gave it flavor to everything. It was really good. Pibimbap, a colorful dish that satisfies all five senses. This is where Kochujang shows its true colors. Our stories continue on. Although our experiences are different, we are nearing an agreement on the secret of Korean fermented foods. Meanwhile, the chef is preparing another dish for us. The fertility of Korea's fermented chang seems endless. How does gochujang jjigae taste? I thought it would be actually overpowering, a little bit, a little bit hot. Mm, yeah. uh, I thought it would be overpowering, but actually you can taste everything. You can taste everything. Yeah. You can taste everything. Very rich um, flavor. Mm. One of the first things I noticed coming to school was there was no measuring cups or tablespoons mm. in the kitchen, and I brought my own. <laughs> mm. Because I'm telling them all the time they need to measure everything, and they don't, and they're just used to doing it by hand. Watching the um, community I went to see make kimchi was such a, the best, Korean cultural experience I've had since I've been here because it was a small um, community. The camaraderie and the kids were walking around and people were coming to visit and they were bringing food and just hanging out. Some people were going and leaving and coming back and forth. It was just, it'll always stay with me that um, now whenever I see kimchi, I have a whole, that, you know, picture comes back to me. It's really great. Just following the recipe does not result in good food. Good food needs know-how and careful attention. Many of the Korean dishes we experienced were made by adding just the right amount of chang without specific measuring and mixing with hands. Koreans call this instinctive touch sonmat. <laughs> Feeding someone with her own hands, that's what Korean sentiments are all about. Mm. It's really good. I like it very fresh like that. It's the freshest I've had. It tastes nice and fresh. Yeah. 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 Son 
Lab is a uniquely Korean measurement and know-how. Make fermented food, in, in my experience, you know, if you look at the way it's done, someone is in charge of every little kind of detail and there is like a, a, a mastermind behind the operation. Tim had a first-hand experience with Sonmad when he was making Jeonggukjang. <laughs> so I, I was told before about the sonmat, which is uh, literally the hand taste. I don't know. I don't know how you'd say that. It's not the taste of a hand. That sounds quite grotesque, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, it's nothing like that. Um, I think that what they mean by sonmat is that you really get the sense that a person is making this, not a machine. Not uh, you know, not not even a recipe book. This is really um, uh, something that's been passed on through the generation. And uh, it's it become when they make a kimchi, you know, the family make the kimchi. It become like that that they everybody you know everybody go there join together. It become like a, a, they make like a party. It's very important day, you know. So it's really, really keep the tradition that way. Food is more enjoyable when shared with others. The Korean tradition is to cook together and eat together. To Koreans, making fermented food is not a chore, but a celebration. During my kimchi assignment, I got to share a meal of freshly made kimchi and cooked pork with other villagers. I was a little hesitant about the oyster, but adds, yeah, oyster and pork adds a lot of flavor and uh, it feels healthy eating it, doesn't it? I mean, there's no fat in it. It just feels light and crispy. It's not heavy. It's very good. <laughs> it was special to see that to Koreans, food means more than just nourishment. Each one of us went on a trip to unveil the secrets of Korean fermented foods. We marveled at the science hidden in Korean traditions. We discovered Korean sentiments represented by patience and care. I believe that uh, for Koreans, uh, fermentation means uh, culture, uh, tradition, and family. Fermentation is the backbone. It's the backbone of Korean culture. It's the backbone of Korean cuisine. And it's very essential of everyday life in Korea. Korean cuisine doesn't really exist without fermentation. Fermentation and Korean way of life are so intertwined that I had no idea about before coming to Korea. By tasting Korean fermented foods and sharing our experiences, we discovered the real flavors of Korea. To Koreans, fermentation is science. It is also the culture of tamgum. It's the beginning and the end of the taste of wisdom.